Hello guys, this time I'm gonna show you my studio setup that I use every day at my apartment to produce original mix, remixes, instrumentals or remix, as well as video editing and visual effects. I have to tell you, I've spent almost like $80,000 for my setup. No, of course not. It's not going to be as fancy as that mouse modular synth studio. Well, honestly, my daily basis studio setup was pretty simple, mostly with budget equipment. I've made changes of my setup a couple of times, depends on what project I'm on, and also I love audio and video hardware. It's fascinating for me. Okay, let's start with my early setup a couple of years ago. I used Apple Mac Pro early 2006 with two 2.6 GHz dual core Intel Xeon 5150 processors and upgraded with SSD system drive with 16 GB of ECC RAM. This old machine still has its power. You still can find it on Amazon or eBay for a very cheap price. Speaking of power, this machine only runs on 32 bit OS X up to Lion 10.7.5. So if you know you will not run any RAM hungry application or 64 bit software, you can use this machine for a Start. You can find there's still many recording or mastering studio using Apple G5 as for their main workstation. As a backup and for my mobile workstation, I own a MacBook Pro Retina late 2013 15 inch. More about this later on the video. For my primary DAW, I use Ableton Live 9.5 64-bit and Logic 9 for mastering. It's a matter of preferences. I choose Ableton Live simply because I can produce beats, samples, and map MIDI devices or controller very easy and straightforward. Just plug and play. Most of today's audio equipments are ready for Ableton Live, so does Cubase, Shuffle Studio, and Pro Tools. For mastering, I choose Logic 9 instead of Logic X. I simply don't like the Logic X user interface. It feels like GarageBand for me. Anyways. Whether you do a single track mastering or stem mastering, Logic can do much better compared to Ableton Live. Logic has more features to do specific tasks to edit or fix the waveforms on certain frequencies. Primarily, I use Behringer Zenic 1204 USB mixer or USB interface. This budget mixer has done very well for my projects. It has 8 channel line or mic input and 2 in and out via USB 2 to fit my DAW on Mac. Its built-in 24-bit multi-effects processor is really useful and solid. Also, we can connect to outboard gear with AUX sense or return if you want to go pro. For specific project, a good friend of mine bring his Focusrite Liquid Sapphire 56 Firewire interface. This hardware can give you 28 in and out simultaneously. With 8 mic pre's and liquid technology, a bunch of pro features that give your workflow more professional. I use Symmetric Clues at 88192 for ADDA converter. This will give me 8 in and out digital to analog or vice versa to the Liquid Sapphire 56 via ADAT also for the master clock 44.1 kHz. From this point, I can do 8 channel or 4 stereo channel multi-track analog mixing using the Liquid Sapphire 56, Lucid 88192, Xenix 1204 and back to my door. The Behringer MS20 was really the best studio monitor for only 150 bucks. This 20W stereo near-field monitor support 24-bit 192kHz ultra high-resolution DA converters for an incredible dynamic range. It has both analog RCA and digital inputs via optical or coaxial, so I can use it to connect my Mac Pro or MacBook Pro via optical toslink cable directly to its digital input to monitor my mastering process. I love my Novation Zero SL MK2. With this unit, I can control every single button in Ableton Live, so I can keep my hands off the computer keyboards and mouse while tweaking VST instruments or effects, even for live performance.
M Audio Oxium Pro 49 is awesome. It has 49 keys with rotary knobs and pads to control all your instruments or effects. If you want a MIDI control plus a keyboard that has pro features, then you should buy this. Also, it fits nicely on your desk. The Suntronix STC2 is a large diaphragm cardioid condenser mic that perfect for vocals, amps cabinet, acoustic guitar, piano, or any other live instruments. It also uses 48 volts phantom power that can be supplied from my Behringer Xenix 1204. It comes with robust case so I can carry anywhere safely. And as a backup, I have Samsung C01 condenser mic. This $70 condenser microphone was perfect for everyday use like podcasts, voiceover, even tutorial videos. My main headphones for mix and DJing is the Soul Republic Trax HD, an on-ear headphones that we can customize or mix and match every single pieces of it. Actually, this headphone is perfect for mobile devices, laptops, and DJing. It comes with cool pouch to put your Trax HD on the go. Well, nothing else to explain about this product. It has everything. But did you know that every MacBook Pro has digital audio output port? It support up to 192 kHz of pristine audio quality and I can connect directly to my MS20 studio monitor through its digital input. I use Azo Color Edge CG245W, a 24-inch IPS display monitor to achieve accurate color when doing video editing. This high-end professional display monitor has hardware calibration and popular in post-production industry, aerospace like NASA, air traffic control, even medical and gaming for its amazing color precision and accuracy. For more info about this product, head over to Azo website. The Apple Cinema Display and the Dell S22 40L both are 20-inch display monitor and they are gorgeous. Fit your desk and they are very very cheap. I would love to add more Dell monitors for my next upgrades. Last but not least, my hard drive. I want to be able to store all my work samples and all stuff in a fast and reliable drive. You don't want to lose your files, right? Me too. I use a couple of Western Digital MyBook Studio Firewire external drives and a MyBook Thunderbolt Duo for a total of 9TB of storage. Include a 1TB for my time machine backup. A good tip for Ableton Live users, you can set your recording cache folder to any drive that you think is faster than the system drive. By doing this, Live will speed up its decoding process when you import an audio file, also the buffering process when you reopen the project. I guess that's pretty much it. If you want to discuss more about the stuff I use, please put comments. Plus, there's a link for every single product I own. You can check out its specs and latest price on the video description below. I hope you guys enjoy watching it. And don't forget to subscribe, hit like or dislike button. You know what to do. And thanks again for watching. Ciao.